see something. I can't really communicate with the dead. I, I never could. I'm frightened. How could she love a sister she's never seen? Because you kept them apart. I'm Winston Essex, and this is part of the garden here at Mansfield House. It's a quiet part, a retreat, a refuge, if you like. I come here sometimes to be alone for a while. Note, I said alone, not lonely. We all like to be alone occasionally, but none of us cares to be lonely. And yet, so many people are lonely. They reach out for love, for companionship, for fulfillment. And that reaching out knows no boundaries, not even those of the grave. Andrew, it's time we left. I can't stop thinking about her, Paula. But you must. It's over. I don't mean Lisa. I mean Christina. But we've already decided. What's the point of asking Christina to come home? You decided. It's the same old argument, isn't it? Even now. Andrew, it's over. There's nothing Christina could do here. Accept what you are doing. Maybe that's enough. I'll write to her today, I promise. I'll tell her what happened. <laughs> Christina can light a candle for Lisa in Rome. She'd want to be here with us. She'd want to talk to us about Lisa. Paula, she was a twin sister. She loved her. How could she love a sister she's never seen? Because you kept them apart. I'll wait for you. Paula! You're afraid to have Christina come home. You're afraid to hear her questions. Lisa, forgive us. Christina. Oh, don't talk, darling. Please don't talk. Lisa. Oh, no. oh, no. oh. Lisa.
Never been to Europe myself, but the missus says as soon as the youngest gets married, well, who knows? I guess you speak the language Italian, huh? Un poco. Well, I'll be doing just like a native. Thank you, ma'am. father died. I knew about his heart condition. But what happened to Lisa? She just took sick. We brought her home from that place. They wouldn't keep her any longer. She was home only a few days, and she developed this fever. This terrible high fever, you see. And then she died. Come into the house. Come on. Christina, I'd like you to meet Jeremy Claiborne, our new neighbor. Oh, not so new, Paul. It's been over a year since I bought the Wentworth place. Well, Christina, I guess you're glad to be home. I should have been home long before this to visit my sister. Did you know her? No, I never met her. She was ill from the moment she came here. Christina, would you like a drink? Or do you drink now? Yes, something to warm me. Perhaps some wine. Well, we're uh, fresh out of Chianti. How about some port? We. Oui? Why don't the four of us go out to dinner tonight? You'll enjoy that, darling. Just a quiet evening. Maybe I should explain what I meant by the four of us. You see, I have a son named Ethan. Mm, you'll like him. He's a fine young man. Fresh out of the Navy, getting his land legs, but still has a seaman's eye for a pretty girl. My father and sister have just died. I think I can wait just a little bit longer for an evening on the town. Christina! Do you mind if I go for a walk? I'd like to see the grounds. It'll be dark soon. Do you want company? No, thank you. I wouldn't want to disrupt anything. Oh, 
sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. Who are you? Ethan Claiborne. Your mother and my father were getting worried. They asked me to find you. You are Christina. Yes, yes. Your mother was right. She said you were pretty. Do you mind if we go in now? I'm getting cold. She didn't say you walk so fast. Well, Christina, I see you too. You two met? Yeah, more or less. Oh, there goes the plan for dinner. Well, I can fix something here. But I have very little in the house besides hamburger. Well, that's my specialty, Miss Burgess. I'll tell you what, why don't the two of you go on and I'll stay here with Christina? I don't know. Her first day back at a... Nonsense. You deserve the night off. And Ethan can soften her up with his culinary expertise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any brothers or sisters? No. Uh, according to Dad, my mother took one look at me and said, we'll never be able to top that. Your mother's dead? Uh, yeah, she died when I was 15. Of course, uh, my theory is that she took one look at me and said, we don't want another one of those things. <laughs> I might as well have been an only child, too. I never saw my twin. Why not? We were separated just after we were born. She was sick, some kind of congenital illness. She spent her whole life in hospitals, sanitariums, you know, places like that. It's a shame. I mean, a pretty girl like that. How do you know she was? You were identical twins, right? <laughs> That's what made it so easy for me to visualize her. All I had to do was look in the mirror. I sent her a present here, a welcome home present. It was an antique locket that I found in Naples. The kind that has room for two pictures, and I took two identical photographs of myself and put them inside. I often wondered how she felt when she opened it. It's too bad you didn't know her. But I did know her. How could I not know her? She was the other half of me. Haven't you heard the theory about twins, that they're really the divided halves of the same person? Yeah. It's only an accident at birth that separates them. But they're never truly separated. Like the Corsican brothers. I believe the theory. Do you? Yeah. I know there were times when Lisa felt my joys and my pain. And I hers. What a drink. I heard a lot of rattling and banging in here. Oh, I'm sorry, Mother. I didn't mean to make a racket. Is there anything I can help you with? You did say that Lisa used this bedroom. Well, we did have her in here for a few days, but she seemed so unhappy, we moved her into the next room. Oh, then maybe that explains it. Explains what, dear? Why I can't find anything of hers, not a single thing that belonged to her. Why on earth would you want to? I just do, that's all. Excuse me. Christina. What's the point in all this? You won't find anything belonging to Lisa. No, I won't if I don't look. But there isn't anything to find. She brought almost nothing with her. Mother, she had to have clothes. She had to have personal belongings, books, records, a diary. Everyone accumulates things, Mother. So this is where she died. It's so empty. Christina, let me save you the effort. There is nothing of Lisa's in this room. Not here, not in the whole house. But why? Why is everything scrubbed so clean of her? It's as if she never existed, as if she were never here. Oh, she existed, briefly. 
And she was here. I suppose I did remove all traces of her, all reminders. There are some things in life that don't call for souvenirs. Of course. What was that? Oh, it's the locket, the one I sent her from Naples. Yes. You did give it to her, Mother. I did, darling. At least I tried to. Didn't she like it? For some reason, she was afraid of it. Afraid? But why? I don't know. I told you, Lisa, it was strange sometimes. Was it the identical portraits? That was it, wasn't it, Mother? The photographs must have seemed so healthy when she was so ill. Yes, perhaps that was it. Well, then the only memento I have of my sister is the one I sent her myself. Lisa? Christina! Oh, go away! Please go away! Lisa? It's me, it's your sister. Would you cry out? Me? You only hurt me? You're really serious about this, aren't you? Yes, I am. What'd your mother say? I didn't tell her what had happened. Why not? Because she would have said exactly what you've said. That it was just a particularly vivid dream. How can you be sure it wasn't? Ethan, my sister's come back. What can I say to that? What do you feel like saying? That you're out of your head. Go on. It's all right. Okay, you're out of your head. I guess that means that we don't look at furniture ads today. Oh, I mean, Chris, you keep talking like this, and the only furniture you'll have will be the pads on the walls. No. She's come back, Ethan. I don't know why, but she's been trying to reach me ever since I came home. Is that what you were running from the first time I saw you? Maybe I shouldn't run. Maybe I should let her reach me. What for? You don't even know what she wants. Then you do believe me. I didn't say that. You know something? I, I tell you, I think this twin theory of yours is a lot of baloney. 
Ah, uh, two halves of the same soul and all that stuff. Your whole person, Christina. Lisa's dead, but life goes on. It was the locket that drove her away. What? The locket I sent her from Naples. For some reason, she could never accept it. Mother said it frightened her. Well, it did the same thing last night. There was this ghastly scream, and she was gone. You know what they use to drive away vampires, don't you? A crucifix. Or a string of garlic around the neck. Come to think of it, you're probably better off just eating the garlic, right? I'm gonna let Lisa come to me. I'm not afraid. You're not? No. Then why are you wearing this? <laughs> Exactly, did you say to Ethan? Why are you so angry? Jeremy says you're seeing ghosts. Jeremy? Ethan told him about your conversation, this mad idea of yours about what happened last night. You have one bad dream, and suddenly our house is haunted. Ethan had no right to say anything to his father. Oh, so it's Ethan's fault that you came back from Europe filled with these melancholy delusions. For heaven's sakes, Christina, you're back in America now. It's not in Mr. Claiborne's business. Well, it's my business if he thinks I have a daughter who's capable of believing such nonsense. Well, then what does it matter what that man thinks? It matters to me if he thinks I have another feeble-minded daughter in my family. Oh, Christina. I shouldn't have said that. It's all right. If you think you were breaking the seal to some great mystery, you weren't. What do you mean? Mother, I know it wasn't some vague congenital illness that put Lisa into all those institutions. I wasn't even a teenager when I understood that Lisa's problem was up here. That's why you and Father quarreled so, wasn't it? He wanted me to know, and you wanted to... to spare you, darling. But I think I guessed that you knew. We've gone through all these years fooling each other. And neither one of us was really fooled. Did you think the truth would make me love my twin sister less? I know you didn't love her less either. She was always an infant to me, Christina. My baby. A child that never grew up. Until the day she died, she called me mommy. <laughs> Lisa, what do you want from me? What do you want? Christina! Hey, slow down, will you? Next time you're exchanging confidences, you can tell your father that crazy Christina saw another ghost. Happy? Is that why you're sore at me? Because I told my father what you said about seeing your twin sister? I don't recall giving you the right to publish my life story. I told him because I was worried about you. And that's just happened. Watch the other half. I told him I believed you. Why do you believe me? Because I saw her too. Oh, come on, Ethan. You're just saying that. That's a very clever ruse to get back in my good graces. Christina, I did see her. Funny thing is, I was afraid to admit it to you. When was it? 
first night on the patio. She was watching us from the edge of the lawn. I thought it was my imagination, but it wasn't. It's ironic, isn't it? Here I was coming around to your point of view that it was all in my head. Now you've come around to mine. What made you change your mind? Because of what I saw at the cemetery yesterday. I saw my twin, or myself, lying in an open grave. I may really be bonkers, you know? And your father won't like that. My mother won't get a chance to hook him. Christina, listen, I've never believed in ghosts before, and I'm not sure I do now. But there may be a way we can prove this one does exist. How? Have you ever heard of a woman named Beatrice Alescu? Told you, company's coming. Now help me tidy up, will you? Well, who is this company anyway? Someone wants me to conduct a seance for them. You gonna do it? No. Nope. So what are you tidying up for? Of course, they wouldn't take no for an answer over the phone, that's why. Hey, they got money? I didn't ask. Come in. Thank you. I'm Charlie Liskew. This here's my mom. How are you? I'm Ethan Claiborne. This is Miss Burgess. Now, look, miss, I uh, told your friend here on the phone that he's wasting his time. I don't do this sort of thing anymore. <laughs> I haven't conducted a seance in 15 years. Please, it's very important. We're willing to pay for your time, of course. Claiborne, you bought the Wentworth place a while back. My father did. Hey, did you ever read this magazine article about my mom? Oh, Charlie, come on. That was years ago, all years ago. I've lost whatever it was I had. Hey, why don't you, why don't you sit down here? Make yourself at home. What, what's so important about this uh, seance? Miss uh, Burgess's dead sister was her twin, her identical twin. We've seen things and heard things. We have good reason to think that she's uh, returned. Twins? I have to know what my sister wants from me. I know it's something very important. Dead twins? Twins? I read something about that a long time ago. I should have it here someplace. Let's see. Here it is. Oh, here. Yes, I should have remembered. What is it? Well, you see, twins are single souls. And single souls can't be parted on this side of the curtain or the next. Now, what's happened to you has happened before to other twins. Your sister wants to be united with you again, united as one. I don't understand. Well, your sister wants to be part of you again, the way she was at birth. But she's dead. And the dead can't return to life. Still, she wants a reunion. What do you mean? Well... Your sister is the other half of your soul. She can't share your life with you, but she's come back to claim what belongs to her, the other half of her death. A seance in this day and age. <laughs> it's incredible. And that woman. Then you know her. Well, I've heard of her. She's a fake, a charlatan. I didn't say you had to be here, Mother. Oh, come on, Paula. Who knows? It might be quite a lark. Still hope you think that when it's over. This is wrong. There's nothing I can do for them. A seance, Mama. That's all they want. So give them a seance. I haven't conducted a seance since your father was alive. He was the one who used to rig up all the tricks, the funny voices, the knocking on the table, what have you. I don't know a thing about all that stuff. But, Mama, they're rich. All she wants to do is talk to her dead twin. Now, we can fake that, Ma. Sure we can. Don't you understand? Your father and I practiced our act for years. 
I can't really communicate with the dead. I, I never could. I'm frightened. Of what? She's in bad trouble, right, Ma? Now you've got to help her. Now come on. Infinite power, count to me, please. Count to me, please. Guide me. Awaken me to the truth of this situation. Infinite power. Let me be the instrument through which the truth will be revealed. Please guide me. Power, count to me. Please. I killed her. I killed Lisa. I'll be with you in a minute, Ma. Mr. Claiborne? Yeah? Uh, it's about my mom. What about her? Well, she's pretty shook up over what happened. You saw her. You were all pretty shook up. Well, what I mean is, a hundred bucks for what she did, that's nothing. That's what we agreed on, Charlie. I, I know, but uh, the old lady's not looking too good. How much more did you have in mind? I'll leave that up to you, Mr. Claiborne. I see. Well, in that case, good night, Charlie. You never knew the truth about your sister, Christina, because I never wanted you to know. But I did, Mother. I told you I found out years ago that Lisa had some kind of mental deficiency. Yes, she had the mind of a child, but her body was... It's perfectly natural, Paula. The body changes and grows even if the mind doesn't. You don't understand. You think you've seen your sister, seen her ghostly image, seen her risen from the grave looking just like you? Yes, I know I have. Then your ghost is half your own creation. You've seen Lisa as you imagined her to be. Perhaps as she imagined herself. But they were identical twins, Mrs. Burgess. They were born at the same time, but they were not identical. What do you mean, Mother? Your sister was different, not just in her mind. Some chemical imbalance, some accident made her different, Christina. Different? Hmm. How you romanticized her, darling. There were times you had me believing that Lisa was like other people. The mirror image of you, my lovely daughter. Then we'd visit her at one of those institutions, one of those places where we hid her from the world, from prying eyes. So that was why. 
I couldn't bring myself to destroy your illusion, Christina. But what did Lisa know about me? Now she knew you. She thought of you with shame and fear. Oh, no. That locket you sent her, the one you're wearing, it terrified her. She screamed at the sight of it. Perhaps because it held the picture of what nature had meant her to be. Paula, what you said before, you didn't really kill the child. It began almost as soon as we brought her home from the sanitarium. They wouldn't keep any patients over 21, so we had to bring her here until we could make other arrangements. We gave her your bedroom, Christina. But she wasn't happy there, so we moved her into the middle room. It was there that Lisa became ill. She ran a very high fever. And one night it rose even higher, dangerously high. I knew she had to have medical attention. I knew she might die without something to bring the fever down. But I came out of her bedroom and knew that I would do nothing. Mommy. 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 She was dead by morning. Andrew didn't say a word to me until the day of her funeral. Oh, Mother, how awful for you. I know you loved her. I know you did, and so did I. She has come back, Mrs. Burgess. We've seen her. Well, I think you should both leave this house now. Tomorrow. I'll make plans tomorrow. Perhaps a trip abroad. You go, darling. No, I'm not going to leave you here alone tonight. I, I don't know what good it would do, but if you'd like me to stay... I... Thanks. We'll be fine. We'll be all right. You wear the locket. Lisa feared it in life. Perhaps she fears it in death, too. One hundred bucks. How could we settle for 100 bucks? Well, keep the landlord happy for Those a while. Those people got millions. I doubt that, Charlie. Hey, they cheated us, right? <sighs> we were cheated. Look, I'm going to bed. I don't feel so good. gave them to me when your father died. I had trouble sleeping then, too. Thank you, Mother. All I have to do is get through this night. Good night. Good night.
Out here, Dad. Oh. Thought you were in bed. No, not yet. No, I wish it were morning. You go to bed and it will be. You think we did the right thing just leaving them alone there like that? Bodyguards can't help this sort of thing, whatever it is. Still wish I'd stayed. You weren't asked, Ethan. Come on, let's get to bed. You go ahead. I'll uh, see you in the morning. All right, son. Good night. Good night. My ma was trying to get what was coming to us. You robbed the Burgesses, didn't you? Here. Take it all. Christina, what are you doing with this? I figured it was worth a lot of money. It's worth a lot more than money. Christina! Please, 
ça. Ironic, isn't it? Sister calling out from beyond the grave to sister. A twin she'd never really known in life, but whose companionship she longed for after death. Longed for to the extent that she was willing to drag her sister into the grave with her. Was it excessive loneliness? Excessive love? Or was it the cold, greedy hand of death prompting her actions? Who can tell? At least now she may rest in peace. Thank you. 